thank you, thank you for inviting us to join this uh, solidarity uh, action. Before we even begin to discuss the issue of death penalty, uh, I really want to say that we are concerned Israel's possible retaliation response to last week's ballistic missile attack. Uh, the war between Israel, Hezbollah, and Iran is escalating. We are all very concerned. But we are fully aware that the conflicts and wars ravaging this land are unlikely to find a path, not easy to find a path to peace in the near future. However, when both sides is struggling to find one another and to understand one another and continue to cast uh tribal thinking, I would say tribal thinking triumph over reason. Both parties are convinced that the only force and violence can secure justice. This mindset, I would say, is not only the external conflicts, but also it shows in the treatment of Iranians' own people. So therefore, we must ask the Iranian government, are executions of political prisoners truly about defending justice or are they about um, consolidating their power only? Are drug-related executions an act of justice or just a punishment for poverty? Are the executions of marginalized group and ethnic minorities about justice? Or are they just violating the human dignity? I think Taiwan to endure 38 years under martial law. We are experiencing the second longest period of martial law era in the world. Um, during this era of authoritarian rule, the death penalty was a tool of oppression used by the regime to silence dissent. Many political descendants were sentenced to death, clearly demonstrating that the death penalty is nothing more than state violence, a weapon of authoritarian control. This also meant that Taiwan's judicial system long disregarded fair trials and procedural justice. Coerced confessions led to countless wrongful convictions. So we must ask ourselves, how can we entrust a state repeatedly malfunctioning at every stage of the legal process with the immense power of life and death? It was this realization that sparked Taiwan's 20-year-long movement to abolish the death penalty, despite last month's disappointing constitutional ruling that failed to declare the death penalty unconstitutional. We will not give up this fight until the death penalty is abolished. Taiwan's past bears striking similarities to Iran's present, I think. But now we call on the Iranian government to stop using the death penalty to instill fear among its own people. The death penalty cannot condemn crime for it is itself an act of killing. What Iran needs most right now is to stop the violence and begin the process of healing and rebuilding. That's the message that we really want to share with all of you today. Thank you. Um, uh, Zoe, thank you so much uh, for your uh, message of solidarity uh, to Iranian people, to the prisoners of No Death Penalty Tuesdays. Uh, what you said about uh, Taiwan's past uh, um, reminds me very much of uh, today's Iran when you say that uh, you know death penalty was used as an instrument of political um, <clears throat> repression that the judiciary was uh, 
actually not independent uh, death sentences were issued based on course confessions. That's uh, what uh, we are going through and uh, I think we need uh, the, um, your experience. Uh, how I know that we still have that penalty, but it is going the right direction uh, and uh, I'm um, and your <coughs> excuse me your your fight against that penalty i mean the taiwanese friends uh, fight against that penalty has always been inspiring so thank you thank you so much um uh, if you allow me i will say a few words in farsi and then we go to our colleagues uh, other colleagues uh, um, who are in taiwan and uh, 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 other members of the World Coalition Against the Death Penalty. خانم زوی که در واقع مدیر اعتلاف تایوانی علیه مجازات مرگ هستند ضمن ابراز نگرانی در مورد تنشی که در خاورمیانه وجود داره در مورد تاریخچه اعدام در تایوان صحبت کردن. تایوان یکی از کشورهایی است که هنوز اعدام داره ولی خب جهت در واقع جهتش در راستای کاهش اعدام هاست ولی زویی در مورد 38 سال حکومت نظامی صحبت کرد در تایوان که حکومت اون موقع از اعدام به عنوان یک ابزار سرکوب سیاسی استفاده می کرد قوه قضاییه غیر نامستقلی داشتند که احکام اعدام رو بر اساس اعترافات اجباری صادر می کرد و از اون دوره حکومت نظامی تا حالا خب پیشرفت های زیادی شده ولی زویی گفت که ما همچنان به مبارزمون ادامه بدیم تا اینکه به طور کامل اعدام از قوانین لغو شه و ابراز همبستگی کردن با زندانیان سشنبای نبه اعدام و همه کسانی که علیه اعدام در ایران مبارزه می کند Thank you so much Zoe uh, if, if I may start with uh, uh, orally, director of the World Coalition Against the Death Penalty. Um, uh, we have known each other, I think, um, the last 14 years and uh, uh, standing uh, by each other's side in the gl uh, global fight against the death penalty. So um, I give you the floor and I, I, I will translate a little bit uh, just before giving you the floor so that I introduce you in Farsi and then we go to uh, the other uh, colleagues as well. الان از خانم آرلی که مدیر اعتلاف جهانی علیه اعدام هست صحبت میکنم ما سازمان حقوق بشر ایران 14 سال هست که عضو این اعتلاف هستیم و در این 14 سال با هم خانم آرلی و هم با دیگر اعضای اعتلاف جهانی علیه اعدام همکاری نزدیک داشتیم and, and please orally if you could also say a few words about the world coalition the floor is yours thank you thank you Mahmoud um, first of all I have to say it's an honor and a privilege to be attending this 24 hour live stream uh, of solidarity with the um, no death match Tuesdays in Iran um, it's very inspiring to see this movement um, starting from prisoners uh, who every day see people on death row. And I think it's a lesson for all of us um, about the the fact that the death penalty is uh, really wrong and should be abolished everywhere. So thank you uh, for those who are involved in this movement and uh, know that you are all our support. Uh, the Warren Coalition is a membership-based uh, network we have today 188 member organizations worldwide and while at the beginning it started as a mostly european organization it is now um, involving organizations in countries that still have the death penalty um, and the majority of them by local very local actors or actors working in exile um, because of difficult conditions in their country like it's been very inspiring uh, to work with all of them and all of you um, and we really want to continue doing that. As you may know, tomorrow is uh, 10 October, the World Day Against the Death Penalty, uh, which this year will focus on the fact that the death penalty protects no one, and that actually uh, it is used everywhere as a political tool, be it for repression, like in Iran, or even 
um, to suppress um, any um, social movement, any uh, political movement, and, and as a way of oppression and um, control of society. Um, so as Zoe said, we will continue until the end, until there is no death penalty in any country in the world, and you can count on us to support you in this journey. Thank you, thank, thank you so much, uh, Aureli. I will translate very short, the short version. Khanum Aureli Goftan ke hemayat mikonad az سشنبه‌های نبی ادام از زندانیان و اینکه در واقع خود زندانیان چنین حرکت بزرگی رو آغاز کردند و الان به سراسر سر جهان رسیده این برای همه ما الهام بخشه و اضافه کردند که ادام در واقع همه جا به عنوان ابزار سرکوب استفاده میشه در مورد اعتلاف جهانی مبارزه علیه اعدام هم گفتن که 188 عضو داره سازمان های مختلف از سر تا سر جهان و یادآوری کردند که فردا روز جهانی علیه اعدام هست که موضوع امسال اینه که اعدام از هیچ کس محافظت نمی کنه Thank you, Aureli. Uh, I, I think I go to the other guests, but if we have time later, I might ask uh, all of you a couple of questions. So uh, based on the list here, uh, I have uh, Shini from uh, Taiwan Alliance uh, uh, to end the death penalty. Um, well, uh, I think I have also known you as long as we have been a member of the uh, World Coalition Against the Death Penalty. Um, the 14 years, uh, I remember very well. Um, first time uh, I uh, heard you speaking about uh, um, the death penalty in Taiwan. You know, I didn't know anything about that, but uh, it was very inspiring. I think your uh, your energy uh, spreads to all around you. So I'm uh, thrilled to invite you to to talk here and. I thank you in advance for your solidarity. Xinyi, please. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Xinyi, and uh, Zoe already represent TADP, Taiwan Alliance, to end the death penalty uh, to uh, talk the situation uh, about Taiwan. And I don't have much to say, but uh, I just want to say that uh, we will support you. And uh, uh, we don't know what we can do, but uh, I think we will try our best. And in Taiwan, uh, you have the no death penalty Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, and we have no death penalty Thursday. So uh, I think uh, we use that day uh, to do the public talk. And I'm, I, I'm sure that uh, we will deliver the message from you about Iran to Taiwanese and to support you. And I think uh, because uh, in last weekend, we had a conference in Taiwan, and I think Jajan can, uh, my colleague, uh, she can introduce a little bit about the the, 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 the and uh, uh, why we have the two people uh, behind us. Is that okay, Jajan? Uh, uh, absolutely, it's very good. But can, can I just... Uh, uh, give you a, uh, a very short translation and uh, tell you some, ask you one little question as well. Can you say first why uh, Thursday was picked uh, uh, in the no death penalty Thursdays? Yeah, because in Mandarin, uh, Thursday uh, pronounced si, and it's like uh, death. death. So that's why we choose Thursday uh, as a no death penalty Thursday. Okay. And we do it for maybe more than 10 years oh. and we continually do it. And uh, I think uh, more people are aware of, about the death penalty issue in Taiwan. So I think your movement, 24 hours uh, live broadcast and also you know, no death uh, to, to stay is, is really something that I, I think you are amazing. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we, we picked, um, or, or the prisoners in Iran picked uh, Tuesday because uh, this is the day that uh, uh, 
people are transferred to solitary confinement in that prison and uh, um uh, i mean you know this this the fight that we are all part of is um is also uh, very sad you know i have seen you being sad uh, basically everyone you know when when somebody is executed and uh, you know while we have been here in these 24 hours um uh, actually people were transferred yesterday tuesday to solitary confinement and and uh, uh, at least two were executed this morning uh, a couple of hours ago in the same prison so uh, thank you so much uh, um uh, Shini, uh i just translate very short and then we go to so that you can show what is happening behind khanum shini am ke uzv etlaf taiwani alayh mujazat marg hastand goftan ke hamayat mikonim az shanbay nabe edam va bad izafe kardan ke goftan ke ma alan 10 sal hast ke panj shanba ha alayh edam ro darim dar taiwan دلیل انتخاب روز پنجشنبه به خاطر مش... تشابه زبانی در زبان ماندارین بین کلمه پنجشنبه و مرگ برای همین یک روز رو انتخاب کردند که هر پنجشنبه رو در مورد اعدام صحبت میکنند که آگاهی مردم رو بیشتر کنند و گفتند که این حرکت 24 ساعته ازش یاد گرفتیم شاید ما هم استفاده کنیم و و همچنین اینکه همبستگی ابراز همبستگی کرد و گفت که ما حتما در پنج شنبه های علیه اعدام خودمون در مورد زندانیان سه شنبه های نب اعدام ایران هم صحبت خواهیم کرد Thank you so please um, Let's continue Hello everyone um, Jia Zheng from TAPT uh, We just had uh... in an international conference uh, during the past weekend. Uh, the conference is titled uh, Let There Be Light After at the End of Darkness. Let There Be Light at the End of Darkness. So uh, we talked about uh, what can we do afterwards uh, after the constitutional uh, results, the constitutional litigation results. And also we talked about the next steps, uh, what we should do as a civil society, uh, what we can push for the abolition. And uh, I would like to also take this chance to introduce the uh, two people behind us. They are now in the uh, uh, cut out humor figures because they are the uh, wrongfully convicted uh, death row prisoners. So they are now both uh, detained, are detained in the detention center. Behind me is Chiu He Shun, and he has been uh, detained for over 36 years in, uh, in Taiwanese uh, detention center. And the other one on the other side is Wang Xingfu, who is also wrongfully convicted, and he is currently the oldest uh, death row prisoners in, prisoner in Taiwan. So we are also working uh, to clear their name and uh, campaign for their uh, for their release. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So, so can, can you say a very short uh, about this constitutional process, where we are now and uh, uh, where are we going? Okay. Um, wow. So basically, uh, the Taiwan Constitutional Court uh, pronounced that the death penalty is not unconstitutional and it does not violate the protection to to um to uh, yeah the right to life however it limits the application uh, of the death penalty in the future and it doesn't say much uh new things because uh in Taiwan we don't have mandatory death penalty and the court said 
yes, mandatory death penalty is unconstitutional. And also they say uh, the application of the death penalty can only apply to people who committed the most serious crimes. And we have passed the uh, ICCPR and, and it already uh, implemented as a domestic law. So this is also something that we have already um, practice in court. And also it, the court says that uh, it's unconstitutional to sentence people uh, with mental illness to death. So this is also the fight we have been uh, fighting uh, alongside with the lawyers for our, um, for those uh, convicted. So according to our opinions, we think this, uh, it's a it's a pity that the Constitutional Court did not pronounce the death penalty unconstitutional. It only says that the death penalty should only apply uh, under certain uh, limited conditions. So right. that's uh, where our disappointment is. So, so, but you will, you will continue the the fight, right? Uh, of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, I, I just uh, translate a little. Just one question: the gentleman, uh, you know, one of the gentlemen uh, on death row has been in uh, for thirty six years. You said, yes. And the other one, how many years was it? Uh, he has been uh, one behind Seoul, the one behind Seoul, uh, has been in detention center for over eight, 18 years, 18. since 2006. Right, right, okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about this. I'm going to talk a little bit about this. یک کنفرانس دارن در تایوان در که اسمش هست در پایان تونل نور هست یعنی در واقع همون چیزی که ما میگیم پایان شب سیاه سفید است در مورد تغییرات قانون اساسی و اشاره کردن به دو تا ماکتی که پشتشون هستن که دو نفر از افرادی هستن که محکوم به اعدام هستن در زندانهای تایوان که یکیشون 36 سال در صفحه اعدام بوده و یکی 18 سال و دارن مبارزه میکنن که حکم اونها لغو شه در مورد تغییرات قانون هم گفتن که ما سالها تلاش کردیم که مجازات اعدام به طور کامل لغو شه متاسفانه دیوان قانون اساسی نتیجه گیریش این بود که مجازات مرگ غیر قانونی نیست ولی همون در واقع تعریف سازمان ملل رو به کار برد که فقط در موارد استثنایی و در مورد جدی ترین جرائم میتونه استفاده بشه نتیجهش این میشه که محدودتر میشه استفاده از مجازات اعدام ولی کاملا لغو نشده و گفتند که ما ناامید بودیم ولی مبارزمون ادامه بدیم که به طور کامل لغو شه ولی خب فاصله زیادی نمونده thank you so so much and uh, if if uh, I may give the floor now to um, uh, Mr. Saul Lefrand, co-executive co director of the Death Penalty Project. Uh, you are with us. Thank you for being here. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mahmoud. Um, it's a great honor to um, participate in this hugely symbolic event. Um, my message is one of hope um i know sometimes it's very difficult um to have hope mahmoud you mentioned that two people have been executed um in the matter of the last day potentially in iran and uh tragically more people will be executed um so to have hope in uh, such a time of darkness is very difficult um, but my message is one of hope our organization has been working on the death penalty for more than 30 years. When we started our work, um, the vast majority of the world had the death penalty. The vast majority of the world executed citizens. 
um, in many, many countries around the world. Maybe 70% of the world um, was retentionist when I started. Today, 70% of the world or more is abolitionist. So change is possible and change will happen, will happen in Iran. Um, and it will only happen because of people like yourself, people like Orly, uh, my amazing friends from the Taiwan Alliance in the death penalty, um, with our collective spirit, with our collective work, um, we can see an end to the death penalty. So it's very important that at times of extreme sadness and tragedy, that we hang on to a glimmer of hope and that things can get better and will get better. So just to try to explain a little bit more, um, when we started working in the Caribbean, in the small, beautiful islands of the Caribbean, um, they had a very ugly death penalty um, with hundreds of people held in terrible conditions, prison conditions, facing execution quite frequently. Um, in one country, in Jamaica, there were 300 people on death row in 1992, and executions were carried out frequently. Um, the story is, is that 30 years and moving on 30 years, today there's nobody on death row. Nobody's been executed and nobody will be executed in that country. So things can change and thing, things will change. Um, the ingredient is to take the politics out of the death penalty. In Taiwan, the Constitutional Court failed to abolish the death penalty last week. They had an opportunity to abolish the death penalty last week, but their judgment was political at the end of the day. Um, but pure justice, um, pure human rights, um, and a strong independent judiciary that's free to act and to make decisions based on the rule of law will see an end to capital punishment. So my message is one of hope and solidarity and that things can and will change in Iran. Um, sometimes it's difficult to imagine how that could actually happen. Um, but in time, it will happen. We'll look back at this amazing event. Um, we'll remember uh, the very, very dark times and uh, things can change and will change. So my message is one of hope and positivity um, for all of you and for your amazing work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Saul. I will uh, certainly translate what you said because, uh, uh, as as you, uh, I, I think this perspective is important. You know, uh, we who have been working on Iran uh, at least uh, as long as we can remember, there have been executions and uh, um, they, you know daily executions. But uh, when I hear what you say. Uh, about when you started how it was and how it is now it really gives us hope so i will translate this part uh, in particular because uh, we need to hear it um i don't know how the time is uh, now uh, can someone give four, me a... yeah four minutes please okay four minutes uh, um, that's very short i i, I really wanted to, to i i wanted to talk more with you but as you see we have some limitations and i think you also but uh, uh, as uh, one of the iranian uh, iranians fighting against the death penalty i must say that uh, um, i think uh, it's it's very important as you said uh, uh, so um, that we stick together because uh, this is a global fight um, I, uh, we are very glad to be part of the World Coalition and have uh, amazing colleagues like you from all over the world. Uh, you give us hope. I hope uh, sometimes we can give you hope. I'm sorry that we we always come with uh, sad news, but uh, but we never give up, right? All of us. So uh, I hope that Taiwan with, uh, will abolish the death penalty soon. We will celebrate together and then we will celebrate every single abolition until it's done. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um,
اگه اگه من اجازه داشته باشم فقط یک ترجمه خیلی کوتاه بکنم بله لطفا در فهم کنم دو دقیقه میتونیم دو دقیقه آره آقای آخرین فردی که از تایوان به ما پیوسته بود آقای ساول لهرفراند از مدیران اجرایی یک سازمان بین که به اسم دت پنالتی پروژکت یعنی که پروژه پروژه مجازات مرگ ایشون گفتن که پیام من هم همبستگی با زندانیان سشنبای نب اعدام و مبارزین علی اعدام و هم امید هست گفتن که من میدونم که تو این 24 ساعت حداقل دو نفر اعدام شدن تو این 18 ساعتی که شما این برنامه رو داشتین تا این لحظه ولی باید امید داشته باشین اون موقعی که ایشون شروع به کار کرد میگفت که هفتاد درصد کشورهای جهان اعدام رو اجرا میکردند و ولی امروز هفتاد درصد مجازات اعدام رو لغو کردند فقط معدود کشورهای هستند که اجرا میکنند مثال آورد از جامائیکا که اون موقعی که به کار شروع کرده بود 300 نفر منتظر اعدام بودند امروز کاملا لغو شده و هیچ اعدامی وجود نداره و مطمئن باشید که دیر یا زود اعدام در ایران هم لفت خواهد شد تا اون لحظه کنار هم ایستادیم 